or TV channel 91, Freeview channel 264 or live streaming via www.visiontv.co.uk. Application for iOS or Android. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. The vaccine offers hope for a safe country free of coronavirus. I urge all state governments, traditional and religious leaders, to take the lead in the mobilization effort within their environment and spheres of influence. I similarly urge all eligible Nigerians to present themselves and be vaccinated in accordance with the order of priority already mapped out at the various authorized designated centers only. Nationwide, we are live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. Thanks for joining us. I'm Hawa Salihu Adaman. We begin with the presidency. President Muhammad Buhari has made a strong representation to member nations of the international community to work individually and bilaterally towards achieving global peace, which he described as crucial to sustainable development. Addressing six new ambassadors and high commissioners posted to Nigeria, the president also made a case for concerted efforts towards mitigating the spread of COVID-19 and the impact on humanity. Let's now join State House correspondent Adam Musambo for more. It was a highly befitting diplomatic welcome for the new envoys on arrival at the seat of the Nigerian government to formally assume official responsibilities. They are High Commissioner Muhammadu Musanji of the Gambia, Kim Yong Chai of the Republic of South Korea, Thomas Felix of Slovak Republic, John Gerard Donnelly of Australia, High Commissioner Masadur Rahman of Bangladesh, and Ambassador Yao Riberi Butiamko of Guinea Bissau. President Muhammad Buhari, who received their letters of credence individually, said Nigeria enjoys very good bilateral relations with their countries, stressing, however, that the cordiality needs to be deepened and expanded in the greater interests of their people. In addition to the fraternal relations between us, the one thing Nigeria has in common with your countries is peace. Peace is priceless desirable and crucial to sustainable development and achieving the targets set by the United Nations Global Initiatives. Achieving global peace is vital to attaining food security. Peace and food security should be pursued simultaneously. The president also emphasized the need for the countries to come together towards addressing prevailing challenges of terrorism, insurgency, displacement of persons, climate change, population explosion, human trafficking, corruption, poverty, and proliferation of small arms and light weapons, which he said are either sources of conflict or resultant consequences. These challenges, though on a diverse scale, threaten the existence of humanity and human relations. These challenges underscore the need 
for the international community to work together to collectively identify appropriate measures to globally overcome these challenges. Describing the novel coronavirus as humanity's greatest threat, President Buhari said the pandemic does not only affect public health, but also devastates people's economy and livelihood, hence the need for collaborative efforts at mitigating its spread, despite the vaccine rollout. Enhancing the existing cordial bilateral relations between our countries remains a priority. I therefore implore you in the course of your duties in Nigeria to build on the successes of your predecessors. As each of us embark on this tour of duty, we would like to reassure Your Excellency that we will spare no effort to contribute our modest but sincere contribution to the strengthening of the excellent relations of fraternity and solidarity that have always existed between the Federal Republic of Nigeria and our respective countries. During the colorful ceremony held in compliance with the COVID-19 safety protocols, President Buhari wished the new envoys a very successful tenure and promised Nigeria's continued cooperation in fulfillment of their mandates. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. To the legislature now, the Senate Committee on Finance says it will not hesitate to take decisions against revenue generation that are not complying with extant rules on remittances into government coffers. The committee said that these are the continuation of its investigation of revenue generating agencies of government. Dayo Ogunshala has more. A lot of things we play out. There might be some agencies that will be retained. There might be some agencies who might relinquish their wide expenditure capital for them to stay low and only the personal government takes care of that. These are that have to repay back to the coffers of the government. Without necessary approval, spending government money. And there might be some agencies that will be recommended for prosecution. That was the Committee on Finance Reading Route Act to representatives of agencies summoned to defend their revenue generation and remittances. Heads of agencies took turns to present their reports, while representatives of Physical Responsibility Commission were on ground to cross-check their records. Whatever you have rejected to pay, which have been considered illegal, has to be a I don't know how you're going to do that. But you told us, apparently, at the beginning, that you have a document that uh, the committee reminded agencies of government that the extant rule dictates that every fully funded agency of government must ensure 100% remittance of their high jihad. From the National Assembly, Dayo Gunshola, NTA News. And the House of Representatives is advocating more involvement of local players in commercial activities on coastal waters. A bill to that effect sponsored by Representatives Linda Ikpeazu seeks amendment to the Coastal and Inland Shipping Act of 2000. ...from unsuspecting Nigerians in the promise to influence the sale of some of the forfeited items to them. But the chairman of the Interministerial Committee, Dayo Akbata, while warning Nigerians to stay away from such fake and false agents, promised that the committee will stick to the open and transparent processes of disposing the forfeited items. The committee intends to engage valuers and auctioneers as part of the process in the disposal of assets forfeited to the federal government, and the list of assets will be published accordingly. Some arrests are said to have been made. Still on judicial matters, following the introduction of the plea bargain provisions into the Nigerian justice system, the Federal Ministry of Justice has continued to fine-tune its applications so that Nigerians can have the full benefits of the law. One of the steps being taken is a roundtable for the appraisal of the draft guidelines by federal prosecutors. Again, Femi Okeo has more. Section 270 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015 provides the general legal framework for the application of plea bargain. 
But that in itself is not enough, which is why the Federal Ministry of Justice has brought prosecutors and other stakeholders together through a virtual meeting where a draft guideline will be drawn and reviewed to ensure the effective use of the provision. Attorney General of the Federation, who was represented by the Solicitor General, called for a reforms in the criminal justice system of Nigeria. The effective deployment of the bargain provision will therefore reduce the financial cost of prosecution, hasten trial process, eliminate uncertainty in trials, enhance the quick return of stolen assets, and generally enhance the efficiency of the uh, criminal justice system. Contributions from stakeholders provided an overview of the draft. There's no room for inf informal discussions, you know, all of these things must be standardized so that we can make use of plea bargain. It's one of the major instruments that we can use to reduce congestion of our, of, our, of our courts. There are too many cases in the courts. The draft guideline is expected to be put together to aid the use of the law. In Abuja, Femi Okewu, NTN News. Of the federal government has tendered a cash sum of $1.3 million dollars recovered from the Abuja mansion of retired Air Komodo Umar Muhammad at the Federal High Court in Abuja. The huge foreign currency tendered by the government was admitted as exhibit after it was counted in the open courtroom with the aid of electronic counting machine. The exhibit was tendered during the continuation of the trial of for alleged fraud and money laundering charges brought against him by the federal government. Olabodi Arewa has more. The defendant is facing three counts of alleged money laundering, illegal possession of firearms, and possession of classified documents without authority. He was also accused of receiving $1.03 million in cash from a company, Worldwide Consortium Private Limited, in 2016, in violation of the Money Laundering Act of 2011. At resumed trial, the cash was tendered as exhibit by the Prosecution Council Magaji Labaran, along with various other currencies said to have been recovered from the defendants. However, the Defense Council, Azan Liban SCN, submitted before the court that his client intends to file a no-case submission to the charges. The presiding judge, Justice Ian Gekwo, ordered the court's chief registrar to deposit the cash with the Central Bank of Nigeria for safekeeping. I'm fully satisfied with the proceedings, the proceedings of, the, of the court and uh, we're optimistic. The matter is adjourned to May 27 for adoption of final addresses by the parties in Abuja Labo Darewa, NT News. And we are not done with judicial matters as... A businessman, Timothy Ogbeye, has told 11 members of the Independent Investigative Panel on allegations of human rights violations by the defunct SARS how he was subjected to torture, inhuman and degrading treatment over his refusal to pay 5 million naira to the Akuzo SARS in Anambra State. Judicial correspondent Vera Chingoba reports that the panel also heard a case of communal crisis between two communities in a number of states. Timothy Ugbeyi, a car dealer, told the panel that he was arrested with his two brothers in Abuja and moved to Okozo Sass in Anambra State over alleged allegation of buying a stolen car. He said his inability to pay 5 million naira to Sass and him four months in police custody despite the order of Oka High Court which ordered his release. Timothy, who is seeking a 10 million naira compensation, said soccer came to him when a judge visited Sass facility and heard his story. The panel admitted the papers of the vehicle as exhibits. The policeman now said, I bought a stolen vehicle. That from where the Obina market that sold the car to me now said, No, it did not say any stolen vehicle to me. The vehicle is sold to me, it's genuine. The following day, the Obina was, was killed with seven others. The panel also had the case of communal crisis between Allah and Odekbe communities both in Anambra State, in which Peter Ikeche and Peter Kualo died in police custody. The Odekbe community had accused Danjumo Cheje, OC commander of X-Squad in Delta State, of sponsoring the crisis. 
Ochede, who also hails from Allah, was led in evidence by the police counsel Joseph Mwadike. He denied all allegations linking him to the crisis and said he only read about it on the social media. However, during cross-examination by the petitioner's counsel Ezekiel Eguatu, he admitted attending a peace meeting to stop the crisis. The meeting was convened by the two communities, not I alone. The panel also had the case of Jude Onunze, who is missing in police custody since 2009 when he was arrested over complaint of insult. On informing the panel that the matter is currently pending at the Court of Appeal by the Police Council, the matter was adjourned indefinitely. In Abuja, Vera Chum Meanwhile, solutions to lingering border disputes between communities in Eboin and Cross River states are in sight of the mediation by the Institute for Peace and Conflict Resolution. Abdurrahman Usman Jibrila completes the report. Getting representatives of the warring factions seated here is in itself a success. And after deliberations on ending boundary disputes in six local government areas in Ebonyi and Cross River states, the community leaders resolved to have the National Boundary Commission establish and demarcate the two boundaries between the states. Establishment of police presence to provide security for lives, property, and ensure free movement for adequate engagement in farming and other socio-economic activities, where other areas agreed upon by the parties. IPCR, NEMA, and NOAA, as well as other relevant agencies, should collaborate to administer relief materials to the expected communities as well. The communities were encouraged to support government efforts on the resolutions of the crisis and implementation of the cross-border projects to ensure sustainability of peace in the state. In Abuja, Abraman Usman Jibrila, NTA News. And from here in Abuja, we take you to our Lagos Network Center, where Jennifer is on standby with more reports on Nationwide. Hello, you're on. Thank you, Howard. Now, the federal government is finalizing plans to establish a trade remedies authority to enforce rules of origin and tighten borders against fraudulent invoicing ahead of the full implementation of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Adeniyi Adebayo, made the disclosure at a media party in Lagos. Abola de Salami reports. Created with the intention to boost intra-regional trade in Africa among the 55 countries that ratified the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, it is also expected that the agreement will increase employment opportunity to ensure Nigeria fully maximizes the agreement for economic gains. Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Adeniyi Adibayo, represented by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Public Sector Matters, Francis Anatogu said the federal government is committed to establishing Nigeria's designated competent authority for administering the AFCFTA rules of origin, as well as to automate the process for managing exports and product registration. Creating one single market for Africa, for made in Africa products, it means uh, a program that will reduce import duties on made in Africa goods that are exported to other African countries. Lagos State Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budgets said the state government has come to understand that the GDP impact of the AFCFT agreement on the state's economy will be massive. Lagos State is strategic to Nigeria in pushing forward what we call our national agenda in positioning uh, Nigeria right, for the African Continental Free Trade Agreement and the various things that will happen subsequently. And if they are able to produce more, then more people will be employed and at the end of the day, it will increase the, the GDP. Stakeholders present at the Middle Pali stressed the need for concerned authorities to focus energy on making Nigeria the transport hub for Africa under the AFCFTA Agreement. In Lagos, Abola de Salami. NTN News.
Lamari time, the remote cause of the recent barge accident in which goods worth 500 million naira were destroyed is guiding key players in the maritime sector to take stiffer measures in enforcing licensing as a way of ensuring safer business environment. Michael Olaleye reports. These avoidable barge accidents plunged 640 feet containers into the sea. It is a major casualty that has sent key players back to the drawing board as they identified blind double stacking, substandard jetties and badges as possible causes. To avoid a repeat, this meeting emphasized the need to design regulation, ensure compliance and street monitoring so that the trade will not be an all-commerce affair. Action has already started. Um, some terminals, some illegal, some substandard jetties are already being shut down. Nimasa and the task force are already going to work to clamp down on substandard barges. So that is ongoing, and I think that will address the issue. The batch system has not only facilitated the option of multi-model approach to cargo evacuation, but it is the answer to trade facilitation. The Nigerian Shippers Council is looking at the provision of navigational aid and other technical assistance. We intend to enhance efficiency of barge operations and we intend to protect Nigerians who are in this, uh, you know, in these operations, you know, against uh, maybe foreign threat or domination. It is important as a cabotage, you know, uh, effort that barge operations should be protected for Nigerians. In the last one year, goods worth 1 million 20 feet equivalent units have been transported to locations covering 50,000 kilometers within the country. In Lagos, Michael Walale, NT News. Time for a break now. The news will continue shortly with Hawa in Abuja. Stay tuned. Wonderful news. The village headmaster is coming back to your screen. Mowiri Abimi Owiri. Teacher Go on a better school for last meeting. Not be honest on a rugged yeah, yeah, school for each job. I know, I know, I don't know for you. Second, it's called Oja Village. Can they see? We know how to at all at all. Yeah, at all. And I know that even you too, you are getting a lot of orders. Hey, we are trying to shower. Sweep her leg out. She was standing there. Sweep it. I love you so much. And how did I give you the impression that I was interested in that position? <laughs> 50 year uh, anniversary. You mean anniversary? I mean, it's not I talk with that now. Let me let not me. You want to make a drive me? Not for me because of for me.
From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NTA International is with you in your living room, office, everywhere and anywhere. We provide the company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview UK Channel 264 or you can download www.visiontv.co.uk app for iOS or Android. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International window to the world. Thanks for rejoining us. It's nationwide. Moving on here in Abuja, considering the devastating effects of flooding in the country in 2020, the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency says the best time to prepare for the rains is now. On NGA Fine Phase reports that farmers in the central and northern regions are also advised not to begin planting because of what it terms for start of rain witness in the last few days. As a result of flooding in 2020, lives were lost while hundreds of thousands of hectares of farmlands and houses were destroyed, leading to displacement and loss of livelihoods. As the country eases into another season of rainfall, Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency is alerting the public of possible flash floods. Those who are building their structures within the flood plains, those who build without putting drainages, and human activities like uh, blockage of drainages, they help to cause flooding in any environment. So this is the best time to begin to prepare. And if any person is living within the flood plain, to find his way out of such places. Farmers Meanwhile, the Nigeria Meteorological Agency, NIMED, says farmers in central and northern Nigeria should not be deceived by the early rains to commence planting. The agency, we recommend that other preparatory planting activities, such as clearing, land clearing, purchase of inputs by farmers, should commence as scheduled. NIMED 2021 climate prediction indicates that farming season for central states commences from late April to middle May 2021, while that of the extreme north begins from late May to June ending. On Nguye, fine face. And see news. Meanwhile, another dialogue on seeking a robust approach to the security challenges in the country is ongoing with stakeholders focused on restoring sanity in the affected communities. Abdul Malik Hassan reports. Is a policy dialogue of stakeholders necessitated by the security challenges facing the country. Here, proffering solutions that will enhance security of lives and property, in addition to restoring strained relationships among affected communities, are the goals. It's not that technology will now replace the physical security measures, but rather it will augment for effectiveness and efficiency. Before now, what we have worked with, what has helped us is credible intelligence. And for us to get credible intelligence also, um, we need to also win the trust of the citizens. Participants here believe that strong synergy between security agencies will do the magic, just as emphasis on intelligence gathering is key. I've spoken about the need for getting our children into schools. Ten million, not learning any, not in any school, not learning any trade, probably begging or doing some things. Then we don't see them. We only see them when they take to crime when they go back to kidnap children in those schools where they were not allowed to go to. Why are we not dealing with them now? Some of the advisory that they are bringing was actually uh, the artificial intelligence gathering, which is what is now in vogue. So everybody, every country need to now to key into the artificial intelligence in fighting insecurity. While intelligence gathering, improved technology and strong synergy between the security agencies was stressed on, others believe that governments need to go back to these root causes and reduce number of out-of-school children. In Abuja, Abdul Malik Hassan, NTN. And the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Marlon Garbashe, who says the language of disagreement with government should be decent in as much as the present administration remains media friendly for the sustenance of peace and democracy. This was part of his lecture at a workshop in Abuja 
organized by the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies for political party leaders, Timothy Yusuf completes the report. Two days of exhaustive deliberations at this workshop centered on enhancing political parties' visibility in social and mainstream media. While political parties must invest in the new media to elevate their participation in the polity and national discourse, they need to keep their proxies and supporters under check in the new and digital media cannot be overemphasized, as the medium is observed by many as more combative without regulation. It's not for government to clamp down. No, let the issues be thrown out and let them be trashed in the public square. This actually the administration of President Muhammad Bari was given commendation for the respect it has for the fundamental rights of especially the freedom of speech. Tribalism and bigotry that seem to have become a thing of the past are also observed to have resurfaced in Nigeria. As political parties' leaders, Malam Garbashew threw up the challenge of not derailing from national integration. The level of existence, there's no difference between Igbo man and Yoruba man. They're all the same. You can't say there's no, there's no house someone who is, a, who is not an armed robber. Or as we are now seeing, uh, Fulani kidnapper, ethnicizing crime. That's what's happening in the country today. Misinformation shared over and over again has the potential to disintegrate in the people and country. Participants and organizers believe that there must be deterrent to offenders. Use the media to integrate our country and use the media to build our country. Every political leader should be held accountable for in actions or actions that is either directly perpetrated by him or his troop or his followers. Everyone with a phone today is a potential journalist capable of either giving out true or false information. Participants therefore enjoined Nigerians to tread with caution in whatever information they give out to the public. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. And it's the turn of Fatima in our Makudi Network Center with an exit of reports. Good afternoon to you. Good evening and welcome to Makudi. Rural farmers of Ivinja plant, also known as bush mango or ogbono, in local language have benefited from the federal government's equipment on the use of bees pollination services for increased production of the plant, which is useful for food and pharmaceutical products. Elia CTR reports that the farmers who were drawn from Benue and Kogi State have also received training on best practices for increased yield for Ivinja for both domestic and foreign earnings for the country. Ivinga tree, known in local parlance as Ogbono, is consumed locally as a source of food and internationally sought after for its pharmaceutical benefits as it is rich in fiber and low cholesterol level. Research has it that Ivinga is a major household food for over 170 million Nigerians and 17 million Africans in the diaspora, being a potential source for wealth creation and employment for Timi Nigerians. However, its availability is constrained by several factors, hence the introduction of technologies such as the use of bee pollination services in Ivinga production is timely. Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mohamed Sabo Nanunu, who was represented at the event, and other key partners who described the gesture as vital in promoting Ivinga production, urged beneficiaries to make the best out of the gesture. In order to increase the production so that you have sufficient uh, quantity for the locals and exports, that is why the ministry, the minister has found it important for this distribution exercise to take place. The ministry thought it wise to bring in intervention in this form. Many other interventions have already come into the ministry. This is another one. Beneficiaries express gratitude to the federal government for the empowerment scheme. And with this, I am telling you, we are going to boost the production of the Avenger nationwide. Participants are to be trained in various aspects of the production chain, which they are expected to step down to others in their respective states. In Makudi, Elias, ETF, Intenish.
Governor Samuel Otom has pledged to do all humanly possible to wipe the endemic tears of pensioners in Benue State. The governor stated this when the newly elected state chairman of National Union of Pensioners, Michael Vimbi, visited him at the government house, Makudi. Charles Abba reports. Pensioners in Nigeria and indeed Benue State have continued to grapple with non-payment of pensions and even gratuities. It is in recognition of their plight that Governor Samuel Oton extols them for their resilience and understanding and assures them of his plans to reduce their sufferings in spite of the harsh economic situation. He lamented the recession occasioned by COVID-19 that adversely affected funds from the Federation account and internally generated revenue. The governor, however, noted that with the recent domestication of pension scheme, permanent solution to pensioners' issues is in sight. As soon as you return, you're getting your money. And my prayer is that before I leave office, let that begin to happen in the state. State Chairman, National Union of Pensioners, Michael Vembe, noted that pensioners are frequently getting ill and dying because of the difficulties they face after having served their fatherland. Every civil servant is smiling now, both at the state level, at the local government level, and teachers. I also appeal to you that pensioners who are your fathers, who are your neighbors, who are your relations are in the same problem. He prayed for rededication of pensioners to God to ward off the ills befalling them. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. And that's our contributions from Makudi Nationwide continues with Chinenye in Enugu after the break. Contemporary times require practical skills to remain competitive and relevant in your organization. Therefore, take advantage of NTA TV College short proficiency courses to sharpen your professional skills. Basic Broadcast Accounting and Auditing, date 19th April to 30th April 2021, two weeks. Audio Engineering, Operations and Maintenance, date 19th April to 23rd April 2021, one week. Protocol, Event Management and Public Relations, date 3rd May to 14th May 2021. Two weeks. Intermediate camera operation techniques. Date 17th May to 11th June 2021. Four weeks. The course fee for the four-week course is 100,000 Naira per participant. The fee for the two-week course is 80,000 Naira. While the course fee for the one-week course is 40,000 Naira only. Accommodation inclusive. Venue for all the courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA TV College near Old Government House, Rayfield, Jaws. For more inquiries, please call 0803-314-4383 or 0806-980-9807. NTA TV College, Jaws. Training you to be the best you want to be. The second wave of the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic is upon us. To safeguard lives of our people, the government has signed the health protection regulations which makes wearing a face mask mandatory in public places. Wear a mask. Keep social and physical distancing. Avoid crowded places. Wash your hands regularly with soap and clean water. And use hand sanitizer. Is real. Do not be infected. Do not spread it. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. The vaccine offers hope for a safe country free of coronavirus. I urge all state governments, traditional, and religious leaders to take the lead in the mobilization effort within their environment and spheres of influence. I similarly urge all eligible Nigerians to present themselves and be vaccinated in accordance with the order of priority already mapped out at the various authorized designated centers only. Life is a game. We are cool. We are trendy. Energy moves us. Sports is our game, our oxygen. Because with the round leather, we ball. We hustle. All over the land, 
north and south, we are united in the positive glory. We are encapsulated by HiFL. We leave for the game. It's game time. Showing on MTN Network. Thank you so much for staying on and welcome to Enugu. In a bid to effect quality control in the power sector, the federal government is putting up mechanisms to ensure adherence to technical requirements and the metering of Nigerians. Minister of State for Power, Mr. Godi Jedi Awa, gave the indication during an inspection tour of a test station in Enugu. Susan Ede has details. While the federal government follows up on the plan to meter all electricity consumers in the country, it is also taking steps to regulate the quality of meters being procured to ensure they meet the requirements of the Nigeria Metering Code. To serve the Southeast Zone, a meter test station is on the way in Enugu. Minister of State Power, after inspecting the facility, is satisfied with what is on ground so far. If they import them, our facility here will test that it is what meets what Nigeria requires before it is stored. The minister, however, frowned at some unprofessional connections he observed on the streets while on the official visit. When fully functional, the managing director, Nigerian Electricity Management Services Agency, NEXA, explains that beyond certifying meters for use in Nigeria, the test stations will also periodic test on the meters, all in the bid to ensure safety and that customers are not shortchanged. Every country of this world has their own technical requirements, specification for any equipment. And our meter in Nigeria is the Nigerian metering code. So any meter that, is not, that has not passed through here cannot be installed, cannot be used. The test station is expected to be ready by May 2021 in Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. The Nigerian National Volunteer Service, NNVS, has embarked on a two-day biannual consultative forum for NNVS federal and state officials in Enugu with the aim of promoting volunteerism, development, creation, and revival of dormant and non-functional state offices in Nigeria. Eva Aneke has the details. The Nigerian National Volunteer Service was established in 2003 with the responsibility of encouraging volunteerism, socioeconomic growth of Nigeria, and offering talent for the realization of the Sustainable Development Goals, as well as achieving Africa's 2063 Agenda. The Deputy Director, NNVS, efforts of the state coordinators for being diligent in the discharge of their duties and the Enugu State Government for being the first state to host the biannual conference since the approval of inclusive volunteerism by the Federal Executive Council in 2020. The spirit of volunteerism is intricately intertwined with the Nigerian culture and it is expressed in the variety of uh, service religious groups are youth and community-based organizations. The direct NMVS represented Permanent Secretary, Political and Economic Affairs, Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, said NMVS has done a lot in providing succor to Nigerians, especially during the lockdown. Volunteerism has the potential to significantly promote blood-based national ownership, gender quality, inclusive participation, and sustainability of policies and programs of government. Some partners and participants are short of their steady commitment to improving volunteerism in the respective states to achieve the desired goals. In Enugu, Eva, Aneke, and Tia News. And that is it from Enugu. We will now rejoin Hawa in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Hawa? Very well, Chinaye. Thank you. The national leader of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Bola Ahmed Chinubu, has donated 50 million naira to the victims of the recent fire disaster at the Casino Central Market. 
The APC national leader announced the donation when he visited the state to sympathize with the victims and the government of Kassina State. Awad Halil reports. The national leader, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, was received by Governor Amini Bella Masari and other top state government functionaries. He commiserated with the victims and identified himself with the government and people of the state of other unfortunate fire incident. The APC national leader, while expressing shock on the level of destruction, emphasized need for collaboration and unity among Nigerians. Uh, we, we have to continue to promote unity and uh, collaboration among members of communities in our country. There is no other way to go. He was also at the palace of Emir of Katsina, Abdelmumini Kabul Usman, where the Emir expressed appreciation on behalf of the people of the state. The sound goes to the government, to you, the good people of Katsina, and we thank you very, very much. I mean, the donation from the APC national leader is coming when the victims are still counting their losses. In Katsina, Awal Halleru, NTNE. Sexton suspects, including a female, have been arrested for the involvement in illegal petroleum products business in Abia State. Steve Lona in Wokolo reports that six tankers, a bus, and a Toyota Camry used to convey the products were also impounded. The 16 suspects, according to the commandant of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps in Abia State, were arrested in five different locations with three trucks loaded with 33,000 liters of diesel, another truck loaded with 10,000 liters of diesel, a bus, as well as a Toyota Camry car loaded with the same petroleum products. You just brought me here because I was passing by and I saw army people by the one place operating there and I was just sitting by the side. Immediately the army said that I should come and follow them. That's, the only, that's how I just found myself. The, my customer. The military police uh, asked me, how do you know? He said, yes, uh, he's my church member. Because he was sick, so they were looking for someone to sign short for him to start they can, he can go and treat himself. So before I knew it now, they bundled me and, and, and brought me here. The commandant, Vincent Ogu, expressed gratitude to other security agencies, including the Nigerian Army and the Nigerian Navy, Owerenta, for their support. The suspects on citing the operatives of the call a routine patrol took to their heels and abandoned the car which was already loaded with about 15. The 16 suspects will be charged to court. In Omaha, Steve Lona in Waukolo, NTA News. And from Abia, we take you to our Benin Network Center, and Agatha is on duty today. Hello, Agatha. Hello, Awa. Thank you for joining us in Benin. Our government has commenced the disbursement of cash grants for women in rural areas in Edo State. It is part of efforts to sustain the social inclusion agenda of the present administration. Ona reports that the target is to disburse the grant to some 3,400 beneficiaries in the state. Poverty reduction has become a major objective of governments all over the world, and they are working towards achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, approaching it in a combination of strategies, one of which is through the National Development Program, adjudged as the largest social program in Africa with over $1 billion earmarked and to impact the lives of the poorest and most vulnerable positively. Through the Federation of Humanitarian Affairs to assist rural women during the lockdown period of 21 Naira, own of grant for them to continue their local and small businesses so that they will keep them afloat during this period. Okay, so how were the beneficiaries selected? The machine was selected from the downtrodden from the local authority, local government, through the state government and other stakeholders of the government. We are happy that Edo State is part of it. Just like Oliver Twist, our hope is that there will be because we know our people need this. Over 12 million households have been interventions of the social development program in the last five years. Look, I see the federal government needs, I need it. Mm? I, I'm a baker. I learned how to bake. 
but the means to start is not there. So with this one, I will go to market now, I will buy baking powder, flour, and the things I will use, at least for a start. With this, the federal government says it is ready to empower the women, and all they need to do is to show the willingness and readiness to be assisted. This may just be the flag up. It says better things are to come. In Benin, Wachkuka Ona, NTA News. And Chairman Nigeria Government Forum and Governor of Ikiti State, Dr. Kayo Defiemi says, strengthening the National Youth Service Corps, NYC, to be more effective will contribute more to the growth of the nation's economy. This was when he played host to board members of the NYC, led by the Chairman, Ambassador Fatima Bala, at the Government House in Adoikiti. Kola Adebobui now reports. The visit is to inspect and ascertain the state of the orientation camp with the aim of making recommendations that will enhance the NYC services. The board members of the Corps under the chairmanship of Ambassador Fatima Bala met with the chairman of Nigerian Governors Forum and Governor of Egypt State to seek further collaborative initiatives, especially in the area of upgrade of facilities at the camp in achieving the dreams of the Corps in the state. They're in every facet of our economy. They participate and they are, they are very impactful. Governor Fayemi who observed that NYC remains a critical institution in achieving a better and brighter future for the country, emphasized the need to continually develop common ties among the youths in promoting national unity and integration in the interests of the country. We are on the same page with you in terms of strengthening the capacity of the institution to serve us better. The governor pledged that efforts are run accelerate completion of federal sectorial in the state to also accommodate staff of the Corps in Adoegiti. Kola Adebabuyi, NT News. And that's our package. How are it's back to you for the rest of Nationwide. So, Agatha, and we sincerely apologize for the unsteady sound and picture in some parts of our reports from Benin. Moving on, Guagualada. The gateway to the Federal Capital Territory from the southern part of the country has an experience in a heavy gridlock for a couple of days, hindering access in and out of the nation's capital. This we understand is as a result of the ongoing construction and rehabilitation of the Lokoja Abuja Highway. Over now to Odiri Ogboru Arutere with a situation report. The price to pay for infrastructural development and societal growth, and you won't be wrong. Banco Village, just a stone thrown from the University of Abuja staff quarters, hosts the Abuja end of the traffic jam, which commuters say stretches to as far as Kuali on the other side. This road will be started, so we don't tire. Since yesterday, we we'll we'll never move to, we'll never move anywhere. Even all these people are, some of them sleep on the road, and they are part of traveler. The Going rehabilitation of a portion of the highway at the Wazombia Park end necessitated the heavy gridlock on the ever busy route to many states and also gateway to the Federal Capital Territory. As at the time of filing in this report, the vehicles heading to Lokoja are still on a standstill as no vehicle has moved an inch in Abuja, Odiri Ogboru, Arutere, NTA News. And sports is next with Tamara Ebiwe. With Burkina Faso and Guinea picking tickets to next year's Africa Cup of Nations in Cameroon on Wednesday, analysts believe the remaining match day five fixtures this weekend will bring out the best in the contending teams as the battle rages on. We know how upsets come about um, when it comes to the qualifiers or even in competition, so uh, they have to keep their eyes peeled. So then you have the match between uh, Sierra Leone, uh, the match between Lesotho and Sierra Leone. Um, for me, it's a 50 50 match. Oyo State and Kwara State will file out in the final match of the 38th Ramat Cup in Kano on Friday, after both teams claimed semi final victories with Oyo beating Ogun 2 1, while Kwara defeated Bochi by a lone goal. Stakeholders in the Maiden National Algon Cup say the football tournament will enhance potentials of hidden talents at the grassroots for future glory and unity of Nigeria. We now feel it is important to empower Nigerian youth. 
what we intend doing is to use our football, which has power to unite the nation, you know, to preach peace. And finally, as the Maiden National Principals Cup enters its final in Abuja, coordinator of the tournament and director of grassroots sports development at Demola Are, task national sports federations on proactiveness as a means of boosting the sector. They must go back to, to age group competitions, not waiting for Olympic Games, all African Games, and then waiting for federal government to do that money for them. The national finals of the Maiden Principals Cup is slated for March 27 to 30 at the Moshud Abiola National Stadium, Abuja. With sports update, Tamara Ibiwe, NTA News. And that's nationwide today. Thank you for watching. Here at the NTA, we stand against rape and rapists. Connect with us in this fight. Good evening. vaccine is safe and it has been certified safe and usable by NAFTA. The vaccine offers hope for a safe country free of coronavirus. I urge all state governments, traditional and religious leaders, to take the lead in the mobilization effort within their environment and spheres of influence. I similarly urge all eligible Nigerians to present themselves and be vaccinated in accordance with the order of priority already mapped out at the various authorized designated centers only. On all our social media platforms, Facebook at NTA Network News, Instagram at NTA Network, Twitter at NTA News Now, YouTube at NTA News Online, all visit www.nta.ng For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng slash live. Now, you can stay updated on the go. Be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad, or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can't beat the rich.